Welcome! In this video I will be walking you through the POS and Clover station. The first thing I'm going to do as a server is open the POS app by sales view on the Clover device. Now in here I can do multiple things. I can log in to the main screen with my name or I can also clock in and out with the clock at the top. If I press here I can see the different hours and I can also clock in for um, under my name. Now I'm going to simply add my PIN code so I can register the hour and the time I successfully clocked in. The next thing is going back and logging in with my PIN code to take orders. I can find my name here and add the PIN. Now from this screen, um, what we're going to do first is take a new order with the icon on the right. We can either um, enter the phone number for customers who want to use their loyalty program or we can skip this as well. I'm going to add a customer's phone number and assign them to an order um, immediately. Once I verify the phone number, I tap on continue and I can have his information right there on the order. We can see his name, phone number and email since he's already a loyal customer. Now on the left side, we can see the different categories and the products and subcategories. We, if we go to a category of Italian, we can see the subcategories of pizza, pasta, rice and we can simply start adding products to the order. Now I'm showing you some examples of out of the stock products. We can see here the lasagna or the zucchini that have um, the out of the stock in red. Now I'm going to add a product that has some modifiers. Now this product uh, will be added onto the right side. On the right side we have the number of the order and the customer. I will tap on the product and we can see the description, we can see the different modifiers, some of them have an extra cost, um, others cannot have an extra cost. All we need to do is simply add on the modifiers, tap them on and add the product to the order. We can see the product, the different modifiers and the extra cost on each one of them. Now I'm going to add some other products. Here I'm adding some rice as well. Um, and we can see that um, this discount has been applied. This specific rice had some discount and it was applied automatically. Some of other uh, discounts that we have as well are um, time-based. In this case, we have the pizza that is showing the 20% off for a certain um, time during the day that we will show automatically. Now talking about discounts, I will also show coupon codes. So you can create coupon codes for a certain category products. Um, in this case, I will be showing some um, a coupon code for the drinks. So I'm going to go right here to the drinks category, add some products, and now I'm going to insert a coupon code. Um, this could be any number or any alphanumeric uh, coupon code, in this case, drink 10 and I'll simply apply to it and it will apply directly to the products of drinks. We can see this displayed on the order with the amount and the discount. Now I'm just simply adding some other products to the order and now um, I'm going to show a non-time-based discount. So this could be for employees, anniversaries and more. We also have runtime discount. So if the dish is cold or we want to kind of like uh, reward the customers in some way, we can give them a runtime discount on any currency value or percentage amount as well, according to the permission of the employee. Um, in this case, if the employee doesn't have the permission, they will have to add a pin code to it. Now we are coming here to pay and we see the different options we see cash 
um, gift card checks. We also see the loyalty cash that is available and uh, external credit card gift card. Now I'm going to proceed with the credit card. I can see the tip percentage amount from here. I can select any and then proceed to take the card, tap, swipe, or insert the card. Now, uh, once we read the card, uh, the customer will enter their PIN code and we can finish up the transaction. After this has been processed, we will be taken back to the POS screen in which we can select if we want to send the receipt via email, SMS, or print it. This is an example of the receipt with the next day coupon code at the end. Now I'm going to show you some other features on the POS. The first one is capturing or uh, doing a tip adjustment. So here we see the transactions that have been processed with the amount and we also see the tip amount. If we tap on the tip amount, we can see the full amount and we can do things like uh, capture uh, the tip or we can also do some adjustment as well. So here we see both of them and now we're going to simply capture it. You can see that the capture has been successful and um, we see the other uh, amount that is remaining. Now, um, another feature that we have here is cashback products. So we can add a cashback product of any amount, add it to the order and uh, process this. Some other features that we have here on the POS is going into the shift information. So we see here the shift length. Um, we also see the date, all the uh, details, how uh, the totals of cash, credit card, gift card, tips, and more. We can see the information of the previous shift, or we can also manage the current shift. We can deposit to save, we can manage cash or close the shift. In Manage Cash, we can add or deduct any amount. In this case, we're going to deduct $50 and save it. Any adjustments or changes will be shown on the screen, as we can see here. And now we're going to close um, the shift accordingly. Once we do this, everything will go back to zeros. Another functionality that we have here on the POS is um, the table layout. So if there is some table layout, we can recreate this and view this directly from the POS. We can see here some tables red and green, which tells you what is available and what's not. We can tap on a table and start taking customers directly. We can add some products to the order like I'm doing right here. And uh, we can fire this to the kitchen. If we come back to the table layout, we can see that the table 54 is now being taken and that's why it's showing on right. If we want to reopen this, we can go to a table and proceed to take the payment and close out the transaction. Once we do this, we can go back again to the table layout and we'll see that the table is now free. Another functionality is switching to event mode. You can have a certain events that have a specific inventory or products that will be displayed for only for sale during that event. We can see here some Italian dishes and beverages that will only be available during this party. We can process the trans transactions directly um, for this event right here and return to the POS once the event is finished. Another functionality that we have is under settings, we can go to the KDS mode. This will turn the POS into a kitchen display in which you can see all of the orders that have been fired to the kitchen and do different things. So here we see the first column of the customer, then we have the tracking status, delivery or pickup, the amount, card information, date and time. If I open one of the orders, I can see the dishes that have been placed and I can also print the kitchen receipt, the order receipt, send an invoice, 
change the delivery or the pickup status or delete. Now I can also set uh, the different status for each one of the dishes. I can say they are in process already um, accordingly. And I can also see the orders by color coding. Now um, I can also change the status for all of the products at once or one by one. Once I say uh, the status that it's ready, the customer will get this uh, message saying that they can pick it up if that's the case um, with the notification. To go, I can go back to the POS, just disabling the kitchen display, and I can return to taking orders normally. Thank you for watching and let us know if you have any questions. Welcome to the SalesView e-commerce solution. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the different sections that we have and different solutions and uh, what you can accomplish with us. Now, on this example, we have a restaurant that has different spaces like a kitchen table, the gallery, um, and we can see other activities as well like wine tasting and more. I'm going to walk you through the different menu and options and we have um, here some options to make a reservation, order online, view our menus, purchase a gift card, reserve a space, become a member, attend a wine tasting class, special events, join loyalty program and log in. So the first thing I'm going to do is login in. I'm going to use uh, my email and password so I can simply finish all the checkout uh, process so much quicker and save the information that will be relevant for the online ordering part. Now the, the next I'm going to walk you through is making a reservation. So if I'm a customer and I would like to book a table for tonight and I have some friends coming over with me. I can come here, select the date, let's say for today, Friday, a party size of four, and I can find the availability and the tables too. Now, let's say I want to go to 8 p.m., so I'm going to pick up uh, the table number that is available for that specific time. And then since I log in, all of my information has been saved. I can also check out um, as guest and add this information on the spot and add any other special request. Now let me walk you through the section of purchasing a gift card. If you give a person that loves this restaurant a nice present, this will be the perfect one. In here I can select the gift card by checking the options and simply add it to the card. Now, um, I already have my information to check out faster, but in here, before I continue, I can add the information. I can see the information of the gift card. I can see the amount and enter the information of who is going to receive it and add a nice message to it. Now, let's say this is going to be for my friend's birthday and I can simply add in here the little happy birthday message. Once I'm ready, I can simply add it to a wish list or add it to a card. Now, I'm going to proceed with adding it to the card and checking out. Now, from this uh, shopping cart icon, I can edit the information, go back. If I continue, you can see my information as a customer has been saved already since I logged in. And now I can uh, proceed with the checkout process. For this example, I'm going to use a gift card to continue and close it out. Once I'm done, I can see that I can rate my experience from 0 to 10 and I can also view my receipt. The next session I'm going to walk you through is reserving a space. So this reservation is for any sort of events, let's say it's going to be for a wedding or I want to reserve the space for anniversary or birthday celebration. I can select here the day, let's say for today or tomorrow, and I can add the party size for maybe 10 people and the duration. Now let's say I want to reserve it for maybe two hours and I can also find a table. Now I see the different availability and I can select the one that works best for me. 
Next, I'm going to um, add my information to uh, continue with the reservation and the checkout. Here I can see um, all the details of the booking. Now the date and the time, um, the duration, the party size, how much I need to pay for the deposit, all the information and a special request and order summary. Once I click on book appointment, I will get the confirmation of the booking with the specifics as well. Perfect. The next section I'm going to walk you through is attending a wine tasting class. So in this section, we can look at the calendar, see the availability of the class and book it. So let's suppose I'm going to attend a wine tasting class. From here, I can see the availability, which is Fridays, Saturdays, Mondays and Wednesdays. So I want to attend the one on Saturday. I can see how many spaces are left and from here I can continue to book it. Now I select the pass and then I can add the party size. If I want to come with a friend, I can change the party size here for two and in special request. Now in here I have different options to continue as a guest, log in or register. Now in this example, I will continue as a guest. So I'm going to add all of my details and see the order summary. Now I'm going to book the appointment and here we can see that it has been confirmed. I can add it to the calendar or continue. Now let's suppose that after the wine tasting class, I loved it so much that I want to become a member. So in this same web portal, we can also become a member. So under this section, I can see the different memberships and I will select the wine membership. I can simply go to um, the membership and see any information and the description, the price. I can also change the quantity, add it to a cart or add it to the wish list, which is going to be the case in this example. If you want to check out the same checkout process works as the other examples. Now I'm going to show you how to order online and the different options that we have for pre-ordering, pickup, delivery and dine-in. So for um, this example here, we have the option for pickup and we can also uh, order it for now or schedule it for later. We can see the different availability and the time slots and we can also select the different addresses to pick it up. Now we have the section of delivery. So this is another option in which you can add all of your details and address and simply continue with the order. And last but not least, we have the dining option in which you can select the table and you will see the address of the restaurant. Now let's continue with pickup. Under the online order, we can see here first the best sellers. So that is one of the AI recommendations that will show up according to your customer's purchase behavior. If we scroll a little bit down, we will see first the categories and under that all the products. So if we go to um, each one of the categories, we will see what are um, the products under each one. And here under drinks, we'll see an offer as a time-based discount for a happy hour, for example. Now let's just scroll up. If we go up, we'll see another um, other options such as uh, the filters. So if we want to find products according to a preference, for example, chicken and um, let's suppose also shrimp, we can check these boxes and see what products match with these preferences and select the products from that um, option of narrowing down the menu. We can see here um, some of the products that apply to my preferences and I can see the description, images and I can add it to a card directly or I can open the product and um, see more information about this product. If I add, uh, if I open the product, I can do certain things like changing the quantity, adding to the card, seeing the description, adding a special request, and I can also see the second um, AI recommendation of customers that uh, bought this item also bought this one. Now, if I want to search for a specific product, I can go to a search bar and type any word, and um, the products that match with this will show up. Again, we will see the product and the AI recommendation. So as you can see on every step of the way, there is an opportunity to upsell. 
Now I want to show you a product that has options or modifiers, uh, how we like to call it. Let's suppose I'm going to order a burger and this burger has different options, so different toppings. Some of them may have an extra cost or not. Um, tomatoes and mayo um, are mandatory, same as the choice of cheese. And the other extra items have an extra price. And I can see here what are the options and add the one I prefer. Now I'm gonna go for the avocado and add it to a cart. Now, once I'm ready to check out, I can click on the shopping cart icon and see the summary of all the products I have added to my cart. On the very last minute before I continue to the checkout process, we will see one last AI recommendation you might also like, and it will give another recommendation that I can simply click and add it to a cart. Once I'm finally ready to check out, I can continue with this, the process and also um, I can check out as login um, or I can also uh, check out as a guest. Since I logged in from the beginning, I'll see that my information is already added and the delivery of preference is also added into the order. So all I need to do is select the um, payment method that I want. So I'm verifying all the information is correct. I can make any last minute changes as well and edit any of the products of my order. And now for this example, I'm also going to use a discount code. So these discount codes will apply to certain products or categories and all we need to do is simply tap in the code and apply it. And under that we'll see that um, since I'm logging I have the option to use any of my gift cards but for this example I'm going to continue with my credit card and with the Clover um, payment process inside. Now in here I can see the order amount and all I need to do is fill out the information of my card details and submit the payment. Once I do this I will uh, receive um, this option to rate my experience from 0 to 10 and I can also view my receipt or print it and continue shopping. Welcome to the back end of SalesWeek. Here is where you can manage multiple locations and multiple industries. SalesView is an all-in-one mixed-use commerce platform. Here on the left side menu, you can access to all the different modules that are grouped into sections. We have Manage, Streamline Operations, Grow, and Support. Under Manage, we have Dashboard, which is a brief summary of the transactions of the day. Then we have Catalog, which has all of your products and services, Orders, for all of the different orders of all your customers from every single point of sale. Reports, discounts, um, inventory, we have employee manage uh, section and accounting. Next, under streamline operations, we have location, dynamic catalogs, on-premise apps, QR code ordering, website setup wizards, quote and invoicing, web store and reservations. Under Grow, we have gift cards, loyalty, recurring billing, marketing automation, customer satisfaction, word of mouth marketing, message center, and website manager. And under support, we have managed subscriptions, knowledge base articles, videos, support access, support tickets, schedule a demo, and chat now with our agents live. Also, we have a section for favorites, which can simply be accessed by going to the start uh, icon next to any of the sections, and that way you can access them for a quick access. If you'd like to remove any of them, you can also click on the star, and they will be added back to where they belong on each section. Now I'm going to walk you through the modules with some scenarios. As the IT manager, Jack would want to check all of the multiple devices from SalesView and also from Clover easily. Now, the best way to access this information will be under on-premise apps. Jack in here can simply uh, use the filters to find the devices that are on an exact location. For example, for the, the Circle restaurant in here, in Jack can see all of the different apps, the name of them, right for each one of the Cloverflex and then the also the Clover POS 
and then any other apps for sales view if there is any POS, incoming, uh, kiosk, or so on. Also, it's very important for Jack to see that uh, every single one of them has been updated to the latest app version as well, and also that they are synced on time um, just before they start taking orders or just before they're going live. Now, in this information, in this report, you can gather all of this information um, just to make sure everything is set up uh, properly before taking orders from the customers. As the FMB manager uh, of the restaurant, Claire, um, who wants to make sure that all the time-based menus are set up correctly before the restaurant opens, she can check that information out under the dynamic catalog section. Here she can check if there is any uh, time-based menus that are not set up correctly, for example, with the start time and the end time, and also for the days. Also, if she wants to add a brunch time-based menu, um, she can come here and add it under dynamic products and service catalogs. Now, it's also very important for Claire to check that all of the different products that have specific units are deducted correctly from the inventory. She can check from the catalog directly by searching for a product and then going to uh, the specifics of this product. Now, from here, she can check the price, um, the price uh, override as well. She can check the category that is set up correctly the inventory setting and then she can go to the modifier groups so she can have modifier groups for toppings um, extra ads or uh, cheese of choice things that may not have any um, extra cost and she can check that they are mandatory and they have a maximum amount to be selected for extra cost she can go to the modifier group such as extra items and make sure that all of the different options have the correct extra cost for these uh, specific modifiers. Now for the components, she wants to make sure that the units are exactly for what needs to be deducted. In this case, she has the hamburger buns and the meat with the quantities. To view this information in general for the rest of the products, she can easily go to manage modifiers or she can also go to unit conversion to simply add any other units that would make sense for the specific recipe level menu that she has for um, the restaurant. Now, John, the inventory manager, wants to see the current inventory count on the restaurant. For this, he can see uh, this information from inventory section on the very first screen where it shows the view and adjust. Um, for the restaurant, John only needs to select the correct location since this is a multi-location, multi-industry account. After checking the information for each one of the products, for the quantity, the unit, the threshold, the last cost price, and the final retail price, um, uh, the inventory management can set up all the ne necessary uh, POs um, to update the inventory according to the information that he sees in here. Um, he can easily check what are the open orders, um, edit any all of any one of them to add any other products or um, receive them partially with any sort of information or comments. He can also check which ones are the closed orders as well and also any other draft orders. Now, for this case, he doesn't need to create any POs at the moment. What he wants is to transfer inventory from one location to another. But first, he wants to check any adjustments on the inventory based on the negative discrepancies that um, he noticed. Now, under here, John can see the product name, the before and after quantity, and the date, and the change, with its corresponding unit and node for each one of these adjustments. Now, these adjustments can be as broken bottles and expired products or missing products that will not found on the inventory count. For the inventory transfer, uh, John can do this very simple by simply selecting the source and the destination. So this way he can do it in just one second and uh, won't take much of his time just by simply adding the transfer quantity right here. And then the inventory on each one of the locations would be um, changed automatically. Now we can see easily the source available, available quantity and the destination um, available quantity. Now in this case, we're only going to move um, some of them because um, 
because of an event or uh, this next location that needs to have more um, quantity available. From a finance perspective, Rachel wants to verify the different tax brackets that uh, have been added um, into the products and she wants to make sure they have been added properly. All she needs to do is go to the tax report and from here she can see that all of their needs for the different taxes are um, added accordingly. So alcohol, beverage uh, commission, sales tax, any uh, custom item tax has been uh, added as well. Um, the taxes can be also set up per product. So Rachel can also go into one of the products, each one of them and see um, that these taxes have been added to each product um, accordingly. For a more specific report on um, how the taxes have been deducted for each one of the products on the order, she can go to the orders report and export this information as well. Now, um, James, uh, as the store manager, he wants to see the sales um, in different ways. Um, he has some reports saved um, that he can access quickly with just um, one click. All of these uh, different filters help uh, to create the reports, but what James needs is a sales comparison by each one of the POS or point of sale. Um, he recently added a kiosk and what he wants to see and compare is um, in order to see the performance of this kiosk. In the case it's not getting a lot of sales, um, he can um, possibly move the kiosk to another location so he can get more traction and get more sales into this uh, new kiosk. Um, right here, James can see the kiosk line that has been added and the total sales as well. Um, it could be not the traction that he's uh, getting uh, that he wants to get at the moment. So again, he's going to find a new strategy to move the kiosk to another location. Now, James also wants to see a comparison between the categories. There are multiple ways to see this. It could be either by uh, a bar chart um, or um, it could also be by a pie, um, a pie chart. Um, both ways are possible. So from this uh, category um, pie chart, he can easily see the category that is having more traction. However, the category that has uh, that is more profitable for uh, the company right now is uh, the visual arts. So what he could do right now is find a new strategy um, to start promoting uh, these uh, products under these categories um, so he can increase the sales under this specific uh, piece. Now, um, Courtney, the general manager, she's supervising the sales from all of the locations. So she pulls up a report that can help her see the performance of uh, all of them. Now, uh, from this report, Courtney can see a pattern on all of them. Uh, she can see that the end of the summer, it's uh, the beginning of the slow season for them. Um, she can start uh, creating new uh, ways to start pulling up the, the sales uh, for this slow season specifically. She can see, she can clearly see that this is a behavior that is happening on all of them, not one in, speci in a specific. As an employee manager, uh, Tucker, he wants to review the shift report for uh, all of his employees. And he wants to also see um, the cash management. So um, in order to see this, he can go to, sh to the shift and stop section and simply click under the shift report. Um, this uh, gives him a quick access to the closeout report that gives him all the details of the shift uh, information for each one of the locations and also by each payment device and for each employee. Um, he can easily see uh, the clock in and clock out for uh, each one of the employees and then see information um, in detail for uh, the shift such as the taxes, um, the cash, the credit card, and all of the transactions at the end. Now, if there's any cash adjustments, he can see it from here as well, or he can go to the cash adjustment report, um, in which we can see that every single uh, movement of cash has been had uh, a reason. 
Typically, the responses that he normally wants to see is a starting bank, closing bank, and deposit to safe. But if there is any specific cash movement, he can see it from this specific report. Now, he can also get the information on the hours report. Um, from here, he can see the information for a specific um, employee. Um, in this specific hour report, he can see the clock in and clock out time. He can see if there is any hours that are missing specifically so th the employee can make up for that time. Or if they did any extra hours, then those hours need to be paid as well. He can gather that, that information from um, this report. And also from the labor report, he can easily get the information for the labor cost ratio uh, for each one of the employees. He can even narrow down the information based on a specific location or job title and see information such as the compensation time and if there's any um, employees that need to have like a salary instead of hourly, uh, he can set that up as well and see that information from here too. And at the end, see the labor cost uh, ratio for the employees that are already making transactions and are active on this uh, restaurant location. Now for profitability reports, the CFO James probably wants to see the performance of his most profitable items. So for this report, um, he can see it from the only one sales and profitability master report. James can see this report uh, by products and even break it down by a specific location. Now from this report, what James wants to see is find his most profitable item and check his performance. So from here, he can see that right now, uh, this um, product has the most profit and also a really uh, high net margin. If he keeps scrolling, he sees that it has a very good quantity sold and he can keep uh, checking all the items such as tax, percentage of sales, then he can also see the total cost, average cost, and also the inventory information such as the star quantity and end quantity for um, this specific product. Now, if there is any information that he doesn't want to have as of now or he wants to add on this report, John can simply customize the columns and add any other sort of information that he uh, wants to have in this report. Finally, from the total cost of inventory, John can also uh, gather this report by different filters. Now, in this case, he's going to do the exact same information for all products and for an, a specific um, location. What John wants to gather from this report is making sure that the total cost of inventory um, is not higher than the total sales. Uh, from here, he can create uh, a sale of the items that uh, are not sold yet and have a higher cost of inventory um, as of now and he wants to start getting rid of them. This information can be fed into the marketing team so then they can actually start creating some automating, uh, they can start automating some marketing campaigns for the products that need to go out of uh, the inventory as of now. And talking about marketing automation, uh, that's another in the last, uh, one of the last sections we're going to go over. So uh, Jessica from the marketing team, she can go to the marketing section and start creating the corresponding uh, automated emails with the coupon codes and campaign for the specific sales uh, for the products that uh, the other team has let her know that uh, need to have some sort of coupon code uh, to be uh, sent to the customers. Now what you can do in here is um, create a specific um, emails with any sort of images or attractive information for the customers. Um, inside the body uh, of the email, she can add um, the characters for the customer name, um, for the discount code, uh, for the product and category. So these variables will be replaced with the actual uh, values for whatever the coupon code 
name or whatever the customer name is so the system will do it automatically for you and you can also uh, add like nice images like we have here on this example now for the rules um, the marketing team can set specific rules according to different conditions so there are conditions based on um, the city um, if it's for a certain group of people um, based on country state zip code um, also um, it could be by purchases so a ba based on amount spent the date spent the frequency the products that they purchase the categories and then it could also be by recency by the date or a quick pick and finally you can also create your own customer groups customized by any sort of uh, information you want to group your customers with and um, after you create your customer groups you can select this option and the system will show you the customer groups that you have created before so you can have these more of a personalized customized um, uh, email campaign um, this way the whole automation process doesn't take her too long and once she sends these uh, marketing campaigns she can track um, She can track um, the success of these um, emails by checking if they have been redeemed. Um, also, um, if the email has been opened or bounced, since that can also happen. So from this uh, uh, report, she can also check if that the email that she has from the customers, that email is working well, and she can keep uh, getting in touch with them via email or SMS as well. Last but not least, uh, Jessica will also want to review the performance of the loyalty program uh, that is currently under um, allocation. Now from this report, she can see the status of uh, the loyalty um, program for the customers, which ones have been activated, uh, how much has been unlocked, redeemed, or the loyalty tier as well for majority of her customers.